Specialty uh, with Fabrique National. Now uh, we've been gone for a while because the uh, YouTube gun channel community, especially the small channels, have taken a, a hit, and they were like really scrutinizing these guys posting videos. Some of these smaller channels, they were getting strikes, they were getting taken down, they were getting the whole channel demonetized, all kind of crazy stuff going on. So. I kind of saw what was happening. I kind of sat out for a little while, you know, took a little bit of a vacation. Things are calming down a little bit, so we're going to get back into it. You know, even these larger channels like Hickok, if you notice and everything, he used to take guns apart, show you what's going on inside. Do you notice he doesn't even do that anymore for the most part? I mean, I don't want to say, I haven't, I haven't really analyzed every single one of his videos, like front to back, but from what I noticed, there's a whole lot less taking stuff apart because they seem to shy on that here. You just start showing what it's all about. I show the outside, fine. I take it apart. I show the inside. I show how it works. And that's like somehow stepping on that rule of like showing how to manufacture it or something. I don't know. So they, they don't, they don't like, I don't know. I don't know. But today we're going to delve into this thing because I want to show you something really cool about this gun. I know you've heard this and I'm going to show you. Here's the Bible. Let's break out the Bible. Uh, and I have to give this guy credit at least here. Let me see. Let's back up a little bit. Here's the Bible. FN Browning Pistols by Anthony van der Linden. And this is my um, this is my awesome autographed copy here. That's right. I know you're all wanting it. So here we go. The FN Model 1910. Here's the sentence that uh, interests everybody here. Uh, the Model 1910 had a sleek, I got the wrong, I cannot read with those glasses on. The Model 1910 had a sleek, modern design that lent itself to multi-caliber production. 7.65 by 17 millimeter, 32 ACP, and 9 by 17 millimeter, 380 ACP, without manufacturing modifications. Huh. That's interesting. The only difference between 7.65 and 9 millimeter, 9 millimeter meaning 380. Don't think that that's the 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 the, the European 9 millimeter. So don't get confused. This is 7.65 is the 32, and 9 millimeter is the 380. Um, the only difference between those two models is the barrel. Huh? A quick change of the barrel will convert a pistol from one caliber to the other. Well, yeah, I guess, yeah, sure. But what about, like, you know, the the magazine and the, the, the action? What about the, 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 the slide? Nope. Magazines were marked with a specific caliber, but any magazine will function in either caliber pistol. As the only difference between the two is the number and placement of cartridge view holes. Although it was common knowledge all parts were interchangeable, FN never offered the pistol as a kit with both barrels. Huh. I see. Now, why do you think that might be? Hmm. It would be a great idea to just offer uh, two barrels with it so you'd have two different calibers. I mean, that sounds like a, a marketing uh, explosion right there. And you're telling me for they manufactured this thing from 1910 to 1983 and nobody came up with that? To have a package that has two barrels, if it's just the barrel that needs to be swapped? Well, I had searched and searched and searched. Let's get a little, sorry for knocking you around here. I searched and searched, but I, I finally came up with one. Now, what I settled on, these things, whenever you'd see these barrels around, 
I swear to you, they always looked like they found them on a, on a highway after being like run over eighty times. They always looked like they were sent through like a grinder. I don't understand why. This is one of the first ones that I've seen that's really just smooth, nice. Now it doesn't have any proof marks, which is weird because you see the proof marks on on this one that's full of them. You know how these uh, the Belgian guns are? They're like covered with proof marks, and there was no proof marks on here. It was advertised as an original FN barrel. I don't know. I've seen other ones that had proof marks. But the, the bore was nice. There was right filling in here. It looked straight. Everything about it looked nice. And these lines right here, if you don't know what these are, I'm going to show you. They uh, lined up really They lined up really nice with what I had. I compared the pictures were good pictures. And I lined them up very carefully with what I had. Um... And, but unfortunately, it was an auction, and it did go to $125, which I really was hoping I would get it for cheaper, but I didn't want to let this one go. And uh, I made a mistake by putting in a high early bid that somebody chipped away at. It was just the whole thing was a debacle. But look, for a buck and a quarter, if it functions, I'm, I'm happy with that. So let's get in here. I just want to back up just a touch. And uh, I'm going to show you what I found out. I, I'm... You know, I don't want to be like uh, too suspenseful here, but I did already try this because I just I had to know right away because I'm like I see other ones advertised right, and they have the spring and the and the thing because I'm going to show you how this comes apart. It uses this this ring up front here. I'm going to show you, but I've seen them advertised in auctions where it has the spring and this cap, and I'm like maybe the the reason why they do this because the spring and the cap are different. I, but I, uh, trust the book. Trust what you've heard. They say it's just the barrel, so it's just the barrel. So I'm going to show you. This is how we uh, take this thing apart. We, let's see. First, we uh, make sure it's unloaded, right? We have to pull the trigger. It's striker fired, triple safety. So it's this safety, this safety, the grip safety, and uh, what's the third safety? Third safety is that if we pull the mag, we can't pull the trigger at all. Then we can't even depress the, we can't even depress this unless the mag is down. So then we can depress this oh, with the mag in. With the mag out, we can't even depress this. So then that then this is uh, it can't be taken off. You know what I'm saying? Triple, triple safety. It was called back in the day. So what we want to do is we're empty. We want to. Engage, like disengage all three safeties and release the striker. Okay, then we want to compress this with our fingers here. Watch out, you know, a little spring in here. See the spring going around the barrel? What does that look like? Makarov, right? PPK. Browning had it first. Genius that he was. And then uh, I like to lock the slide in right there. To that notch if only just to use that notch because you probably put it there for a reason we're going to rotate the barrel counterclockwise and then hopefully the slide will come right off oh you know what we didn't uh release the magazine you always forget something when you take a gun apart right there's always that one that you're like oh oh yeah right yeah, yeah, I, I didn't do that see if you didn't release the striker it would be all coiled up right here like ready to fly out and disappear into the workshop. And uh, a good, if you're going to be manipulating this around and moving it around, a good thing to do is just to slide this out with your finger. So you have the striker, the spring, and this uh, like keeper kind of like. It's like a spring keeper on the end here. And we're just going to take that. Just tuck that in up here nice out of the way. I'm going to take the receiver. I'm going to show you now. Here, I'll show you. Just some basics on Browning's um, Browning's workings here, like how he did these things. The barrel fits inside the slide. It can rotate and then uh, rotate this this amount right here. And the reason why this rotation is here is that these grooves right here, basically what what you want is just a fixed barrel right there. I mean, that's basically what you want. If you never had to take it apart, 
you just put it all together where it just sits like the barrel sits there. But you want to be able to take the slide off. So you want to be able to rotate this out of the way. So you could slide the slide the um, slide the uh, the barrel off. So these these lines that mesh together like this, they're super strong. So it's literally holding the explosion of the you know the whole gun, propelling the the bullet down the barrel and all of that is contained by this locking here of these grooves. They're strong, you know. And uh, what's interesting, if you notice here, it'll rotate up. It'll rotate down to a point and then stop. I noticed that, that it's it kind of like locks in and just stays there. But uh, when you're, when you want to slide the, the slide onto the gun, you have to have, obviously it sits like this. That's how it sits inside the gun. So you see it sits flush up against there. Boom, right? And um, if we zoom in here, I just want to show you a few things in here. So you have three things that lock in here. I gotta get a pointer. I gotta get a pointer. So you have, is this, uh, this is, uh, this is too big. I get some smaller. Should have planned ahead. Oh yeah, this is nice. This will work. So you have, sorry. You have back here, you have this. It's like a pin back there. And that fits into this notch that you see right here. Okay, number two, you have this pin right here that fits into this hole down here. And then you have this notch right here that fits into the extractor, which runs along the side of the gun here. That's the extractor. So if you watch now, all three, boom. See that? All three will mesh. Two slots and that pin, all boom, just like that. Well, this is when it's locked together. Now to lock it together, these, that keyway there again, see how there's a recess here? So you can turn it into that recess. Now slide it onto the gun and then turn it back and lock those, that key weight together. Okay, so that's how it works. So now I compared these two. So here's the one, here's my original. Serial numbers match. Do they match actually? Six, one, three, two, two, two. Everything matches on this gun, yeah. Everything matches here. So this is the barrel that it was manufactured with, okay? So here's the one that I got, the 381. So you see right away, a little chewy, right? It's like a little chewed up. Like, what's going on? How come every time you get something that's not in a gun anymore, it's like, oh, he's chewy. So you're like, we got to check a bunch of things. There's a feed ramp here. One looks a little wider than the other. And uh, these slots don't look exactly the same size, do they? Uh, let's see. And the pin, this pin is like different, a different size. Uh, it's not really, let's check out what's going on here. So right away, I put this in here and noticed yeah, okay, it locks up nice, it fits in here, it fits into the keyway, nice and solid, doesn't slide back and forth. But I notice I could do this with it. See that? Where this one, this one only went to here and that way. It's, it would stop, if I'm, I'm pushing to turn it, it won't go. I don't know what the reason, it doesn't seem like there's anything stopping it, except for just maybe tolerances, the tolerances of this keyway. It won't go any further if I push it. This one fits in the same way, but I could push it, I could go all the way around in a circle. Okay, so what, let's look at the feed ramp here. Here the feed ramp, 
Look at that. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a mesh right there, huh? Look at that. Definitely looks like it was designed and polished up to fit. You know what I'm saying? Whereas here's the 381. Yeah. Kind of. Those edges are sticking out a little bit over there. I mean, will it work? Yeah. Can I put some extra wear on this feed ramp? Because there's some pieces sticking out now? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. And then could it affect how the 32 caliber one, how smooth that one is? Because let me tell you, this gun does feed like butter. So I'm kind of seeing why they maybe never offered this as a package. It isn't so remove and replace as... It's like too good to be true, I think. So, um, yeah, I mean, it looks like it's going to work, but it's just. So now here's the second thing we have to see. Remember, we took this barrel. We slid it in here. And remember, we were doing this here. We were capturing all three. The two side reliefs fit in there and the center pin, right? Boom, perfect. Let's see what we got going on here. Well, first it, it will turn down into there, so that's good. So that's, it will actually go on. It fits in the gun. These slats fit in the gun, it fits inside the recess. Will these three things connect here? Ooh. Something is not fitting. Nope, I mean, I'm jiggling it around. Nope, one of these is not fitting. It is not working. So it would never go into battery. If you notice, whoops, sorry. If you notice here, see that? It's not going into battery. Here's what 32 cal looks like in battery. We're totally, that extractor is totally going into that notch all the way, boom. Right? And, oops, sorry, I keep banging into you. And here? Nope. Nope. But it's not this groove here. In my opinion, I was looking at it. This groove, this groove here looks uh, identical. This looks okay. This is actually, if anything, the one that's there is smaller. The pin... Also, it doesn't look like there's a problem. I could probably just clean this one up a little bit. It looks a little haggard. It's, I think it's this side, my opinion. This big gap there, this teeny gap. So that would be, that would be this right here. This right here is not fitting in. It's not fitting in there. Sorry, it would be fitting in there. Whereas this wider one, it fits. See how wide that is? And in here, much smaller. It all chewed up anyway, so I could... I'm just going to clean that up. Maybe just widen that a little bit and get this. This needs to go into battery here. And then, then we could go from there. I did put it together this way. But, I mean, what's the sense? It's just it's not working. Let's get out our... Uh, let's get out our realistic snap caps here. Which, I love these things. They're good for playing with something like this. Here's our 32 cal. Here's our 380 cal. I'm sorry, I should really be calling it 7.65 and 9 millimeter. I just, I don't want to confuse anybody with uh, the whole 9mm thing. So, let's take this mag. I will prove to you that uh, it is functional both ways, at least. Is that, uh, see these feed lips do look a little weird. You know, it does look a little different. So there's 32 cal. Pulls them right out of there. Not a problem. Sorry, there's 7.6 five and here's the nine millimeter 380 <laughs> the 
It only takes six of these. It'll take seven 32s and six of these. That's why I say, like, see how the holes don't line up? So the holes for the 380 mag will be different. But look, they fit. They feed right in here, smooth as can be. So what we have to do is we have to make this fit. So this is nonsense that it's just they're interchangeable. I mean, they're interchangeable, but... I think I'm getting an idea of why this wasn't something that was just offered in a case. But then if you fitted both to the gun, yeah. But um, maybe it's not possible. Because this part of the feed ramp here, let me zoom in here. This is, if you really start studying this whole feed ramp technology, you see there's a curve to that. There's a certain curve to that. A certain pitch there's a certain like how it's how it's smoothed out it's matched to this it's matched to this for the 32 caliber oh gee sorry It'd be nice to just slide it in there like that to show you what see it's like boom look at how beautiful that fits and if it's even turned a little to the side either way you can see how that messes with it but like when it's just perfectly right there look at that can see how perfectly matched it is right there then this guy it's a little bit of a gap there I guess it's there maybe because it's like now two-tone it's it's strikingly different I mean who knows I don't know but I have uh, I'll show you what I do have um, I gotta start. I gotta start working. You know, I gotta start doing something. I know this. I know this file seems a little rusty. You know what I mean? But oh, this is one of my babies right here. I rely so much on this file. Um, I don't know how it got so rusty. I think I. I think I filed something with it, and then and then left like very fine dust on uh, dust like steel dust on it, and it was in my garage. And I got oh there it is. It's coming off. But what's cool about this is. This file just like fits perfectly inside these slots here. See, which one did I need to do again? It was in, it was this one. It was this one. So will it, will it fit in there? Oh yeah, it fits in there. You got to be careful not to actually file deeper. You don't want to file down the slot further in. I don't think it needs to go that way. Um, I think it just needs to have this this edge taken off and then you got to see which side do we take the edge off from right so here's what i was looking at if we if we look at this real you know it's better to zoom you could see you could focus better um you see how here where are we see how here oh we got the wrong one in frame sorry where are we jeez going crazy here all right i'm sorry you see how here, you see how this this cut goes all the way up to these locking lugs. See it, right? It goes right to the bottom of the locking lugs. Where here, here is a gap. See that gap right there between this, the notch and the locking lugs? So I'm thinking, since the locking lugs have to end up, they'll be in the same spot, apparently. I mean, if we put them right next to each other, they do look like they're in the same spot relative to the notch, right? It just looks like, it looks like the area that needs to come off is here, this edge. Maybe not the whole thing, but I got to just keep filing a little and fitting, file, filing and fitting. And don't forget that the bullet sits right here. The explosion is going on right here. So any compromise in this part right here can uh, blow the barrel apart. There's nothing else holding this barrel together. It's just sitting in here, just like that, with a slide over it. 
So don't think that this... Jeez, oh, I'm sorry. It's just sitting right in here like this. With a slide over it. Just covering it. So it's not like there's something else reinforcing it or holding... There isn't. There's these locking lugs on the bottom holding it in place. But this has to be... Has to maintain its own structural integrity under cartridge uh, explosion. So, um, so what what happens is by cleaning this up, you could actually reduce stress stress fractures. But um, you definitely don't want to take away too much. And you don't want to, like, just mess up its integrity in any way. So you just, uh, you know, less is more. But we just, it looks like we just got to get that, we just got to get that freaking, uh, that little bit out of there to just get this to fit. Right? Wouldn't you say it's that? What would, what would you say? We should wait a day for comments. Yeah, I'll get, like, one and a half comments. Someone will be like, shut up and fix it, stupid. So, yeah. It looks like that pin, that pin down there. Look, I could wiggle. There's plenty of room for that pin. And this looks like it would fit. It just looks like it's not, It you say, oh, it's not lined up. Right, because, all right, so let's see. So this would need to line up. This would need to rotate that way, right? So in order for this to rotate that way, the relief, right, the relief would have to be here the relief would have to be here so this could rotate that way further and if it rotated that way further it wrote it rotated it would rotate that way and then this extractor would fit right in that groove i'm convinced i'm going to give it a shot so uh i'm going to disappear for a little while this will probably be instantaneous for you, of course, but uh, I'm going to do it right now. And I'm going to see if I can uh, take a little of that off right there. Be right back. And we're back. The miracle of television. That literally took five minutes. And let me tell you, that was some gunsmithing shite right there. Because we're going in there. There you go. There's still, see, you can check, like, did we have that up and down kind of movement with the 32? I know we did, because I felt that already. See, we can only really have this up and down, it's okay. We just want to make sure that that's smooth. Super smooth. Let's check it again. All I did was touch off on it, too. You know what I mean? You gotta be careful. You just keep checking and checking. I was really surprised that it fit, like, right away. Still, I feel just the teeniest bit... Of resistance still see like right there you see that how it kind of just that it's still grabbing the teeniest bit and that little bit could be enough to no, well I'm not sure see it's better to be tight than sloppy I think I might just leave it I was gonna come back on with you and do the last little bit but I think we're home I really think we're home free just fitting it in a couple of times like this like We're good. So, look, you could hardly see that I did anything. How much did I really take off of there? And uh, I resisted the urge to go around and touch all of this up and smooth it out. I'm like, eh, just leave it alone. See how it works. Let's see how it functions first. All right, let's do that. Let's get in here. Let's go into construction mode. Let me just wipe this out just in case, uh, in case I got any filings in here, test fitting it just for now. I just don't want to grind anything. I'll give it a good cleaning afterwards, but, um, when you have metal shavings around, you have to, but I just want to make hundred percent sure that it's not going to start grinding the shit out of it when I put it together. Okay. So. Let's get it together now with the 380 barrel. Reassembly. So we get the striker in here. Ba-boom. 
we get the barrel in here and we turn it into this hidden side chamber there. Wow, look, it goes too deep into there though. It's only gotta go right there. That's it. That's the spot. Now we get the receiver on. And we, let's see, be gentle. Got stuck, all right, there we go. This should go in up to Am I breathing too heavy? Up to there. And we should be able to, hmm, interesting. We should be able to go all the way up to there. Let's see, what's in the way here? What's not happy? There we go. Now we should be able to, there we go. See, we, what you what I like to do is, this is how I like to put these together. I like to set the barrel. Oh, jeez, was I off camera like that whole time? I like to get it like that where I set the barrel. I'm sure that's not right. Like, that's not the right way to do it. It seems like there's a grippy part of the spring and a more open part of the spring. I put the more open part forward. All right, that was a tough part to catch on camera, but... This can shoot this across the workshop, so be very careful. It's like in, in, half turn, and it'll lock into place. If you see the notch in the ring line up with the sight, and on the bottom, then you know you're in the right spot. And is it going into battery? The answer is no, it's not. It's not going into battery. Hmm. Interesting. Can it be rotated at all here? No, when it's locked in. Maybe it just needs a little more off that area. It looks like that the extractor is not lined up. Is there any way to rotate it if I push here? No, it's like it's locked in right there. So if that's where it wants to be, I could fit it in the slide like that and look to see what's in its way. Huh, I really thought I had it right there. Because you saw it, it was sliding into the barrel properly. And into the barrel was sliding into the slide properly at that point. Yeah, it doesn't matter how hard it lands. See, it's just not going into battery. I'm sorry, but that interchangeable barrel thing does not... Uh... I'm calling bullshit on that. And I don't know, I'm hesitant to... I'm hesitant to cut away here because I don't I don't think that's what it is. That, that extractor groove... That extractor will fit in that groove. I think what's not fitting let's uh Oh, interesting. It didn't even want to go there for a second. It's Now it feels like it's still hanging up a little bit there. Why would it... Alright, so if it was lined up like that, right? It was turned too far this way. So if it was turned, it was hitting like this, right? Not like that, like this. I think more's got to come up there. Let's take more off there. I'll do it right here with you. Come on, we'll take some more metal off there together. 
I'm thinking that it needs to rotate more. I need one more look. I'm sorry. I need one more look. This is what you tuned in for. What do you want me to tell you? You're here. You're here. So if so let me just see something. Nope. No, that's not it. What we gotta do is we have to we have to turn this into its keyway. Slide this on. Why does it get stuck? The other one doesn't get stuck. All right, there we go. Just one last time. I need to fit it on here. One last time. I need to see something. I need to see one more thing to be sure that I need to take more metal off of there. All right. I need to see. All right, so if I'm holding it like this, the extractor is hitting this side. So you see where the extractor is? It's it's near the it's on the bottom part. So if it's on the bottom part, that means that the barrel needs to turn this way. And if it needs to turn this way again, it's the same direction that it had to go in the last time to make that other thing fit. So so yeah, more has to come off of there. That's the bottom line. Back, turn. It's good. Use that notch. That's what it's for. Right, it works when you use that notch. See that? All right. Let's get a little more off of there. That's all there is to it. Strikers in there, strikers in there. All right. So am I with you? Am I with you? All right. Got to make sure you're in frame. So you know what I'm going to do? I am going to clean this up a little bit. I don't think it liked half a job. That's the problem. So this one, I'm going to clean this up a little bit here. This is not the uh, problem side. However, I just see the way the extractor is sitting on there. I just don't want it to be getting caught on a burr. So let's, I'm going to stay away from the face of it here. I'm just going to make sure that that notch is squared off. And here, I'm going to take a little more metal off here. I want to go right up to those locking lugs. I have a feeling that'll work. I don't have to take much to make a huge difference in this fitment here. All right, now let's um let's compare it. I want to do a little comparison. Let me get in here real close and look. Yeah, this is so this gap here is so big compared to this one, still bigger. So that's gotta be, I mean that's gotta be it. Let's take just a hair off the other side. This top side. So now I'm filing on this top side. I just want to take a hair off that. If anything, I'm just cleaning it up, flattening it out. So it's not like so it's, you know, parallel to the other cut. You know what? Let's, uh, let's get in here. Let's get in here and take a look. Let's see what's happening. Let's check it out. Let's feel it out. Let's do it up. Boom.
Boom. Boom. Boom. Is that right? No. Get it in there. Then we slide. This whole thing has to go to there, right? Now we can come back and then we go down. There you go. That's how to do it. That is how to. John is like, that's it. That's it. That's it. John is looking down right now going, you moron. Is it in battery? It's not in battery. It's not in battery, ladies and gentlemen. And I know you say like, here, just take metal off of there. You know, that's not it. Where did this guy, where did this guy sit? Look how small that extractor groove is. It just happens to be like just in the right spot. And there's no movement. So you can't move it around. It's locked in, man. It's locked in. See, like you can't push it to move it. No way. Um... Guess we gotta I guess we gotta take off some more. <laughs> it's still look at the size of that gap here. Look at it, it's huge. And this is so much smaller. Yeah, this goes up into the locking lug itself. All right, I'm convinced. I'm taking more. I'm taking more off of you. I'm not filing until you say stop. Okay? Let's go. Am I recording? Okay. <laughs> Talking to myself, garage. How you doing, ladies and gentlemen? I'm ready for the loony bin. Okay. See, this kind of filing doesn't really remove a tremendous amount of material because I, I can't, I don't have the ability to slide far. You know what I mean? Oh, but that is doing so. I might, I, I gotta make sure I'm going flat too. You know, like, I, I, I gotta make sure I'm not at an angle or rounding it. It just needs to be like straight up and down. Oh, that's straight up and down. All right. Keep going. There's hardly even any material there. Let's keep going. Oh, yeah. We're feeling like we're making a dent now. To think I had that done in five minutes. That's when John was laughing. John Browning was definitely laughing. Let's fit it. I'm going to be an expert at putting this gun together when this is all over. What? Look now. I'm like, boom, boom. Boom. Just hold it right there and look. It's, you think it's in battery? You think it's going to go into battery now? Oh, it looks closer though. Doesn't it? Or am I bugging out? <laughs> it's locked. Why is it? Why is it frozen? Oh my God! What did I do? What did I do? I think those locking locks aren't uh, in place correctly. Sure they were. What was going on there? Oh, it could just look like this. I don't even have to.
put the whole thing together really. Oh look, yeah, see? It moved it, it moved to go into battery. See that? When I shoved it now. I don't know if you can see that. That's why it locked up. That's why it locked up, is because it it, 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 it went it's like a resistance fit now. We're on the right track, dear soldiers. Let's uh, lock this in, turn it, release. Let's dig in again. We're almost there. Oh, you hanging in here with me? Come on, we're gonna. This is gonna be a success. I'm telling you. Right there, I felt it, and that you know we're going in the right direction. In other words, it wasn't fitting. It wasn't fitting. It wasn't fitting. Finally, it was able. Say, here's my thumb. Not fitting. Not fitting. Not fitting. It was finally able to. Fit if I pushed it, so that's why it was locking in till I pulled it back apart. It's like a resistance fit now. Now all we got to do is just file it enough to make to make it smooth, smooth in and out. Let's use this. This is the yeah. One side digs deeper. It digs harder than the other. Again, though, let's really let's not get. Uh, ahead of ourselves here let's make sure how deep does this channel go too oh it does go deeper too see that it's deeper too and i did i did kind of go let's maybe we'll go a, a little deeper just to really square that off and we'll go little bit further towards the lock it looks too. Am I in frame still? Okay. I don't want to imagine a 20 minutes of like you looking at my elbow. I need a cameraman. I need a cameraman. Gotta borrow Alex. <laughs> Gotta borrow Alex when he gets thrown out. Oh, this is very rough here. This smoother one is better. Yeah, that's better. Hold it straight up and down. Do not angle it like that. Oh, yeah. Let's get rid of Let's fit it. Let's do it. Up. Locking lugs up. Turn to the side. Turn to the side. Ladies and gentlemen, turn to the side. Click it in. Rotate straight. Slide forward. Oh, let's see. Oh, we're almost there. Look how close we are to... I could probably push it. Yeah, see, I could push it into battery, but it's going to get stuck. We're going... We're, we're, we're almost there. Uh, we'll uh, click that in, rotate it out, unlock, 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 slide it forward. It should just slide forward. Why are you not sliding forward? Oh, no, no. I feel like that to slide forward, right? No. Click in here, turn there, slide forward. Okay. So I just did, and it didn't want to work. I'm trying to figure that out. Let's go. Let's go here. Come on. We're almost there. We're almost there. God. Yeah. Little more. Little more. Lit little more. Little more. Okay. <sighs> oh, yeah, I tell you, it sure feels smooth here. Yeah, that part of it going into battery feels great. So let's see. Uh, lock. 
lock it, lock it, lock. Oh, no, didn't do it right that time, though. Let's get it out. Turn it, oh, sorry, turn it into the lock. Sh go straight with it. Why won't it? It's getting stuck in there. It's stuck. It's totally stuck. It's totally stuck. All right. Turn it into the lock. See, why is it? Why does it act like that in there? It acts different than the 32 cal one. Because you're only supposed to go to there, I think, and stop. I think that's my problem is I'm pushing it too far. Yeah, so just go to there, stop, then turn it straight, and then just go like that. There you go. How are we? We're almost We're there. We're there. We're there, but it's, it's just the teeniest bit of hang up here. And it looks like, will it fire? Do I need the spring in there? No, I think I can make the... Yeah, it would fire now. So it's going into battery enough to... See, I, I don't like that I feel an edge here. I feel a little bit of a lip right there. So I'm thinking thinking that maybe that distance is set let me see something I'm curious about the oh that was weird oh he set the striker now though right is that what happened yeah we set the striker so we have to be careful was that like oh the striker's not even in there is it no, 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 the striker spring is back here. Oh, did it shoot out? Did I lose the striker before? That can't be possible. Oh, the magazine's in. I forgot I put the magazine in. I never put the striker in here before, did I? Where's the spring? bugging out that I lost the striker. I don't know where it is. Oh, it's in there. Okay. See, this is what happens. Your brain starts to fry. We don't need the striker in there at all. I want to see what happens with this. I want to see what happens with the 32 caliber one as far as it going into battery. We go all the way home. We go all the way home here. So we have to go a little bit more. Hmm. It's going to be very interesting to check the YouTube analytics on audience retention here. How about camera retention? I'm in here. This is gunsmithing. I mean, I used to do videos where I would like show the gun and be like, this is what needs to be done. And then I would spend like three hours and then I would just come back and go, there you go. See, it's done. I used to think like, is that really interesting? I mean, the interesting part was sitting here and figuring this out and doing this. That was the interesting part. What I'm thinking is, is that this sets how far the slide comes forward is set by this right here. This gap, this distance. And look, that's at an angle right there. This isn't at an angle. This one is at an angle. It's like the extractor. So it, so it opens it up. It's like, so it hits the extractor and like opens it. No, it doesn't do that. <laughs> no, that's not even the extractor group. It's this one. But that one is at an angle even different.
like the other one. As close to it as I can. Yeah, because if these locking lugs are locked into the receiver and that little nub is on the slide, the slide won't be able to come all the way forward unless that nub could fit all the way in here. This is what sets where it sits when it's in battery, right here. Because look, I filed it for, I don't think I'm there yet. Maybe another round or two, but I guarantee you it will sit further right now than it did before, just because I'm filing in that direction. And I am just so glad that I didn't suddenly realize that the striker was gone. <laughs> Stop turning that too far. It just goes to that spot and that's it. See, look at that. Oh, it's so almost there. I bet you that's good enough. That would be good enough to work. But look, it's still not perfect. See that? I could see, I could feel it, that it's still, if anything, it was proud the other way. Not proud this way, it was proud a little bit further, too far in with the 32 cal. It could be that the 32 caliber barrel is worn a little bit. I would settle for just exactly perfectly in battery as far as what it shows in the back here. Let's just uh, let's just touch it up a little bit more. We're going in the right direction. We're doing all the right things. Are we running out of battery? Are we running out of video? Is this going to be the longest mill serve garage video ever done? Am I going to have any viewers left at the end of this video? If you hung, at, hung in so far, I love you. You're my kind of viewer. You are... You should subscri <laughs> subscribe. You know, they say, like, subscribe, hit the like button, uh, hit notifications so you'll know when I post a video. And I never say that because I'm like, you know... Everybody knows what to do. Why should I tell them to do it? That defeats the purpose of... If they just do it, that's because they want to... They want you. They want to come back to you. I'm not soliciting that. I'm not looking down on anybody that does do that, but... But I will say this. If you're still here right now watching this, you definitely need to subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on the bell for notifications, because... You belong here. <laughs> I'm doing an extra, an extra one here at the end. To oh, that's gotta be, that's gotta be it, ladies and gentlemen. It's gotta be it. That's gotta be it. Feels good. Don't go too far. This time, see, I learned about it now. You don't turn that too far. You just get it into that groove over there. You don't, there you go. There's no need to, uh, then you go straight and then boom, there you go. Oh my God, look at that. Is it quite there? It's, it's there. It's there. Let's put it together. Let's put it completely together. Wait, I'm almost there. Oh, the striker though. Can I get the striker in? Yeah, wait a minute. Can't I just know because that's there to block it? Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't. You gotta disassemble. Okay. 
Where's the striker? I almost lost. Okay. It was in the gun. I was bugging out. I was like, that's it. It's gone. It's shot out. You didn't realize it. You lost the other two pieces you found. You lost the striker. And then the striker was still in the, gu in the gun. Excuse me. That never should have been knocking around in there when I was playing. Nice. Okay. So, shouldn't change anything with the striker in there. We close this. Make sure that's not turned too far. Back it off. Back it off. It's turned too far. There we go. Now, even though the striker's in there, we should be able to push that down and go like that. Sorry. We weren't in... We weren't in view again. There we go. And now we got the spring. This is the, now it goes that way. That's the spring. And now we have our retention cap device part. And what do we have here? Oh yeah. Look at that. Nice. Safety goes on and off. Let's see. Will it pull the trigger? Wait, it's... it's oh. <sighs> Magazine safety. Triple safety. Thanks, John. I, I just thought I failed. Oh, yeah. So let's load it up with snap caps. You know, in one video, I forgot to mention these were snap caps, and I was, like, loading it up and then waving the gun around and pointing it at the camera. And somebody went into like DEFCON 5. They were like, I've never seen such irresponsible handgun handling on video. But yes, they're snap caps. I double, triple check before I even uh, do this. There's no live ammo anywhere near this workshop area. And uh, so here's the 32s. All right, we just put 380s in here. We stand up for this. So here we go. Here's the big drum roll, please. Eh. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right, baby. So, yeah. We have two barrels now. We have two barrels. We have interchangeability. We have battery. We have smooth operation. No stickage at all here. Perfectly in battery. Oh, you got to love it. So now we have 380 or 9mm Corto. 7.65. Is it 6.5 or 6? You know what I'm talking about. 32 cal. Interchangeability. So what's weird? You can put a 32 and then a 380. <laughs> they obviously um, will both fit in the magazine even together. Which is, uh, huh. so much to do a video on how John Browning straightened that out. Because these are different size cases. That's crazy. He's a genius. He's a genius, and I now have, I now have, I now have a uh, FN model 1910 with an interchangeable barrel. Thanks a lot for hanging in there. I know this was a long one, but... Uh, I really wanted to take you on this adventure. I really feel good that we went on this adventure, except for that one five-minute part where I filed on my own, which I never should have done. That extra five minutes wouldn't have meant anything, and I could have just kept one current video from beginning to end with a, a cool outcome like this. But, uh, but yeah, you got to love this thing. This is an awesome gun. It really is. Um, check out C and Arsenal's uh, video on this thing with uh, May and Othias. It's it's a great video, a lot of information and stuff. But uh, this two barrel thing always it always stuck in my head. It always blew my mind. I'm like, I'm gonna have to get a 380 barrel at some point and try that. And um, I guess if you're willing to deal with some fitment issues. And uh, and you're handy with this kind of stuff. You want to poke around or have like you know a gunsmith uh, knock around with getting it to fit. Then um, have at it. But I really don't think it's as interchangeable 
as uh, people talk about. You know, it's not just like throwing any barrel, uh, obviously. Unless mine was an anomaly. I don't know. If you know any different, you let me know. I don't really see much on this issue. Do do a Google search for uh, FN Model 1910 barrel interchangeability uh, procedure or whatever. There's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. Only this book here, Mr. Vanderlinden's book uh, touched on it. And even he says there's just straight up interchangeability. And um, there's interchangeability, but you better be prepared for some hiccups. And that's it. Millsurp Garage, wishing you all a happy 4th of July. See you later. Yes, yeah, Zach!